This episode contains mature language and situations. Listener discretion is advised. You wake to the sound of a train. The clack, clack, clack of wheels. In the distance, is that the sound of birds in a forest? No. It's angels in a choir. Or is it demons from hell? It doesn't matter. You have no memory of how you got here. All you know is that you're lost, and that now you belong to the Grey Rooms. Welcome, patrons, to Season 4, Episode 11. Early morning on the mount. Beautiful sunshine, birds singing, angels we have heard on high, you know. It's all great. Right up until you realize it's like this all day, every day, forever. Fucking insufferable. Most of the folks I deal with up here pay for really thick walls. It's only inside, in the dark, that you can hear yourself think. That's why I like Maggie's place. People get this image of the mount like it's all halos and harps. And there's definitely places like that up here. But even in the holiest place in all the realms, people still have needs. Hey there, long years. <laughs> Jeb. What are you drinking? <laughs> Absinthe? Jeb is my kind of mortal. Dumb as a box of hammers and just as attractive. He's loyal to his boss, though, and doesn't water down his drinks. The Green Fairy's not my thing. Got anything new? Hmm. Lady of the house just got in a barrel of mead from the far side of the mount. What's on the label? Uh, Sutinger. Sure. I'll try anything once. You here for, uh, companionship? Or to talk to the lady of the house? The lady of the house. Maggie. The Magdalena. Mary Magdalene. Whatever you want to call her. She's been called worse. Neither for a change. 
Aishith and I are gonna have a little chat. She here? Yeah, came in a little while ago. Corner booth at the back. <laughs> you paying off a debt or making a new one? Not sure yet. We'll see how the day goes. <sighs> Damn, that is a tasty mead. <laughs> yeah, that bunch ain't good for much, way I hear it. But they can ferment a damn fine mead. <sighs> mm-hmm. And put it on my tab? Your souls ain't any good here, Moth. You know that. Standing orders from the lady- From the lady of the house, yeah, yeah. I know. Thanks, Jeb. You keep your nose clean, pretty boy. I did a favor for the lady of the house once, a while back. Not bad having free drinks at the best bar in heaven. Or worst, I suppose, depends who you ask. I crossed the bar and saw her the moment I turned the corner. She was kind of hard to miss. Aisha towered over me, even sitting down. Six wings tucked neatly behind her back. Her hair was a bone white. Her eyes a steely gray. She took my breath away. I spend a lot of time with beautiful people, mind you, so that's saying something. Hmm. <laughs> Better stop staring. <clears throat> ah, you came. And you're only an hour late. How refreshing. Princess, you wound me. I would never leave a lady of your standing waiting. Does that kind of flattery work with the boys and girls upstairs? Of course. I'm in a bit of a bind. I need some rather unique information. Just the kind of thing that comes across your plate. How droll. I expected as much. Sit. Would you like some mead? I can get Jeb to pour us another. Not my kind of drink. Too sweet. All right. Probably best if you just out with it, Moth. This is about as chatty as I get. <laughs> Aren't prostitutes supposed to be good conversationalists? Maybe the new ones are. I've been in the trade for a few centuries too long for that bullshit. Fair enough. I'm looking for a lost demon. Lost as in you don't know where a demon is? Or lost as in the lost demons? The twelve demonic soldiers that followed Abaddon into the far and were never seen again? Uh, the former. I had a demon. Until recently, I knew where he was. Now, I don't. Ah. Uh, carry on. How much do you know about the, um... The Grey Rooms Project? Scam to skim souls out of hell. I assume started by one of the Dukes. I don't know who, but I have a guess. And backed by funding from a diverse group of investors. You're tied up in that? Uh-huh. Interesting. That makes sense, so. Your Queen Titania certainly has been spending lavishly of late. <laughs> yeah, that's our gal. Anyway, one of the demons working the project had a falling out with management. So they tucked him away in a nice little hole. And somehow he managed to escape from a place where... Well, I don't completely understand it myself, but the word impossible got thrown around a lot. No way he should have been able to do what he did. I see. And who is this wayward soul? His name is Wolverike. He gets called Bob a lot by the... I guess by the mortals. Ah. Interesting. I knew right away that the Princess of Consorts, this angelic queen of hookers, knew something about our missing Bob. She wasn't any kind of liar. She didn't have to be. They call whoring the world's oldest profession. And the joke goes that the second oldest profession is spying. 
but Asheth would tell you straight-faced they're one and the same. Other information brokers I deal with can tell me the what's and the when's, but the why's, for those, I go to the princess. I can't give this to you for free, Moth, not this one. <sighs> that figured. What do you have to trade? And don't say souls, I'm not interested. Oh, you know me. Secrets of the trees, right? I know all sorts of things you might like to know. Am I to interpret that as, you'll tell me anything I want to know? I just have to ask? Be a little more coy with me, princess. I still have my pants on. Hmm. Your proposal is acceptable. I have a number of things I'd like to ask you. I'll contact you with the specifics once I've narrowed it down. Agreed? Agreed. You really need to find this demon, don't you? I don't recall you being nearly this generous before. I really do. All right. Let me answer your question with a tale. Do we really need this? At the beginning of the universe, reality was an ocean of souls. A miasma of potential. Untapped and untamed. Things slipped through the cracks of the still-cooling universe. Titanic beings that swam along the soul currents, feeding on the potential of life itself. These were the creatures we would come to know as the Far. In response, the factions formed. A tale you know all too well, and so I will not bore you with the retelling. Thank you. A great war was fought to end the dominance of the Far. Those that were not slain were sealed away forever, mere shadows of their former selves. After the battles were done, the factions retreated to their corners. They formed retreats from the soul currents, gathering potential that had not already settled down into the mortal realms. Great workings that serve them to this day. Am I boring you? <sighs> Kinda. This going somewhere? Your people built the grove, mine the mount, and the demons the hells. Lucifer had very specific ideas in mind. Demons need strong boundaries to be successful, you know? So Hell's army is quite rigid, quite structured. Each layer for such and such type of mortal, a duke for each layer, etc., etc. Uh-huh. Bullshit. What? Come again now? Have you met Lucifer? I can't say I've had the pleasure. His reputation is largely good public relations. He's fallible. The definition of fallibility, one might say. And on his first try creating an entire realm, he nailed it. Created the perfect structure for the demons, their armies, and their soul harvest. He... He what? The Hells are try number two? Yes. Wait, so there's a realm out there, made out of the stuff from the start of the universe? Yes. That's not the Grove, the Mount, the Far, or the Hells? The Far isn't really much of a place, technically, but yes. And it's just... sitting there? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. This is fascinating, but... What does this have to do with Bob? You tell me Bob was in an inescapable prison in the Hells. I know something of how those magics work. Some of the alienists who might have worked on such a project. They're clever. Too clever. Their spell work would have had to be very specific. The most powerful magics always are. And if you say he escaped from an inescapable place... Well, there is a place in all of reality that their gray rooms almost certainly did not account for. Princess, I could kiss you, but I won't. Don't really want to be devoured today. Hmm. 
How do I get in there? I don't know, but that shouldn't be a problem. If I'm correct and a duke is involved in the creation of the project, they'll know how to get there. Just ask them. There is a duke involved. <laughs> that one's for free. Hardly a revelation. I take it you need to get going? <sighs> you bet your sweet ass I do. Very well. I'll contact you with the details of my request for information. Don't be surprised when it's more than you want to give up. If we find this guy, Princess, it'll be worth it. Very, very worth it. the phone, Charlie. Fork Union Fire Department. Charlie! We've got fire! The barn's on fire! Please, you gotta set a truck! I shook away the memory. That was four years ago. I could do this. There was no emergency now. Just me and the phone and yet another friendly paternal figure who thought I couldn't manage 30 acres of family land on my own. Hey, Charlie, it's B. Baby Babs. I tried not to let him hear me sigh. If I could remember not to call him Charles, why couldn't he remember not to call me Babs? What's shaking, Kitty? I'm planning to burn on the back ten this weekend. You, uh, sure you're okay for a burn? Been kind of dry. I hated living here. Rural towns have long memories. The river's running high, and we're supposed to get three solid days of rain this weekend. I'm not an idiot, Charlie. You alone? Trevor's here. The silence stretched until you could have snapped it like a guitar string. He's perfectly capable of wielding a bucket. I'm just calling so you know. Yes, sir. I've been burning that trash pit since I was eight. We will be just fine. Thanks for asking. Uh, falling down any uh, steps recently? <laughs> I'm just saying, if you need a ride, call me. I won't judge. I would have slammed the phone for emphasis, but I could only end the call. Stupid cell phone. I was lucky to have a signal out here anyway. Every man over 25 in Flavana County had the same idea about Harold Gordon's little girl. If only she could have married a local boy who understood farm life and clean, honest living. Instead... She went out and married some scruffy, drugged-out Yankee with all the weird satanic tattoos. Trevor was asleep on the couch again. He wasn't much sometimes. Tough, abrasive, kind of like my land. The only things that could survive in this stubborn red clay were Johnson grass and locust trees. But it was still mine. The land and Trevor made living here bearable. Trav, wake up. I'm going out to start burning the pit. Don't forget your meds. Oh, okay.
that is a respectable inferno. Trevor was more comfortable with the cold than most people around here. New York winters beat the worst Central Virginia had to offer. With his shoulders shrugged up to his ears and his face tucked into the tall collar of his parka, he looked vaguely mushroom-esque. What'd that poor couch ever do to you? It was between me and a new one, so I burned it. And it's two couches. The old red sofa's in there, too. <laughs> That's my girl. Voted most likely to torch furniture on the lawn. <laughs> he kissed my temple, and we watched the fire leap and dance as the old furniture collapsed in on itself. His cheek was rough against mine, and I wonder when he'd shaved last. The scruffy, unshaven look didn't bother me, but it added to the neighbor's long list of things to whisper about. Anyone who ever wrote fantasy hellscapes must have spent time staring into a trash fire. What's making that twister over there? A dark-sided cavern about three feet wide spat out a horizontal spiral of yellow-white flames. The fire tumbled into angry tongues of brilliant red and orange as it reached the open air. Looks like a log. Maybe that's the hellmouth. <laughs> Speaking of hellmouth, are you out of toothpaste? <laughs> if you live in my house, bathe and brush your teeth. That's all I ask. <laughs> well, that no active meth labs. <laughs> that too. Does Gehenna still burn? Strangely, the trash fire was still as healthy as it had been Friday night. Trevor had minded it all weekend. And there was something haunted in his eyes. He needed a break. Gehenna. Biblical reference. A place where sinners suffered until they atoned. Like hell, only temporary. I heard somewhere that it referred to a colossal burning trash pile outside of Jerusalem. I thought it fit here. Normally, he would have at least smiled at that. But he didn't even look at me. I took the rake from him and shoved at some of the smoking bits until they flared up, exposing a long trench of semi-molten roof shingles underneath. When I returned, his eyes were unfocused. You okay? He still wouldn't make eye contact. Something was up. Home base, calling Trevor. <laughs> Come in, Trevor. What? That made me stop. It wasn't like him to be so randomly angry. Not since the barn fire that almost ended our marriage. He must have seen the look on my face because he calmed down. <sighs> Living with you is not easy. Same to you. <laughs> Did you... Yes, I took my meds. Did you stop asking me every five minutes? <sighs> Trevor, he stopped without looking back. I could almost see his muscles twitching in his parka. Something had gotten under his skin this time. It's worth it, though. Right? Usually. 60-40? 70-30. We stood watching each other for a long time before he hugged me. His hand lingered on my hip, right over the scar there. Surgery four pins and I'd been in a wheelchair for weeks after that particular meth-fueled rage. Charlie's brother Sam had been with the EMT crew who picked me up, so of course the whole county knew. I wondered if we would ever get past what he'd done getting clean. Worth it enough for me to stay. But it's still not easy. I need a nap. How long do you think this fucker's gonna burn? I'm not sure. I was really counting on that rain. Is it normal for it to rain everywhere but on our property? I mean, it was coming down hard across the road. Yeah, that's normal. It just feels like it's time to call the doctor for an erection lasting more than four hours. <laughs> At this point, we'd need a betting pool on how long it'll burn. Nothing's keeping you out here. I can watch. Okay. Don't get too close, okay? The edge is brittle. I love you. It's past, Trev. 
Atletico. I'm trying. Have a good nap. The next evening, I held the hose over an empty five-gallon bucket, watching it fill with well water. When one was half full, I transferred the hose to the one beside it. A half-full bucket was more comfortable to carry than a full one. I can take those. Come fill a bucket. I'm good. He started carrying the buckets down the hill to the still-smoking pit. I filled the empty buckets as Trevor dumped the water over the fire's smoldering edges. Smoke billowed up wherever he splashed. Gehenna still burned. I could hear the simmering trash hiss and squeal when the cold water sloshed over it. It was mostly construction trash from rebuilding the barn and a bunch of my dad's junk but the spreading flames we had found yesterday were still stubbornly setting up their smoke signals. We spent almost two hours dumping well water on the fire. And while it had helped, it still hadn't solved the problem. Gehenna is angry. Can you hear it up here? It screams! Pterodactyl screams! Eh! <laughs> Did you check in the back toward the woods? No. Nah. Fill the empties and let me carry for a while. I'm fine. <coughs> I'm stronger than you are. Well, I have been rotting my insides with cigarettes and drugs for the last ten years. Just processed meat and cheese and alcohol. Give me. I think I've got it out in the back, but it's doing something weird. Oh, uh, you see right there, just above the hellmouth? Huh. It looks like it's starting to tunnel into the ground. Does it do that? Dirt doesn't burn, does it? Or whatever this orange shit is? Good old Virginia red clay. No, it doesn't burn. But we might have some interesting ceramic shapes by the end of this. I think it's been doing that because of all the layers of shitty shingles from when Dad was still using it. We must have shaken something loose with the couches. Don't worry, Trev. It'll burn out eventually. Which is why we're playing Jack and Jill, huh? Just a precaution. If you say so, boss. Dream. Trevor? Oh, damn, it's four in the morning. Where is he? He wasn't inside. I checked on the back porch, avoiding momentary vertigo. Just looking at the ten foot drop made my hip ache. When I looked out toward the trash pit, I could see a faint glow. Did he go down there? He was stretched out on his belly, his head propped on his hands as he stared into the flickering depths of the stubborn fire. I could see the soles of his boots and the laces flopped out in the dead grass. His legs were bare. I didn't see any drugs. It's not out. What are you doing out here? I was looking for deer. <laughs> At 4 a.m.? Mm-hmm. The fire's still going, B. Should we call Charlie? Maybe. If it's not out by tonight, I'll call, okay? Mm-hmm. Come back to bed? 
You'll freeze out here. I put your coat on. I see that. Come on, handsome. Let's get you back inside. Oh, no. Did you take your pills? Do I look like I didn't? Oh. No, I, I took them. I promise. I promised I'd stay clean, didn't I? I meant it. I know. Come on. I'm cold. I love you. I love you too. When I pulled into the driveway after work that night, the smoke over the pit had thickened again. I glared at it and stomped down the hill in my work clothes to stare into the hole. Trevor was nowhere to be seen. He must have gone back inside for a nap. Go out, damn you! You're making me look bad! Something in the hellmouth moved. I blinked, reaching under my glasses to rub my eyes. When I looked again... The flames had started to lick up the glassy sides. They looked just as healthy as they had five days ago. Maybe Trevor was right to worry that the Virginia clay was burning. I turned to look up at the house, wondering how long it would take to dump buckets. I really didn't want to call Charlie. The voice sounded like Trevor, but it didn't sound like my Trevor. It pitched me back five years to when I had first known him. Trevor on the streets, meth stretched and froggy throated. A smoker's cough and a fresh constellation of seven pointed stars tattooed across his back, chest, and shoulders on angry skin. I turned to look over my shoulder. Trev? A pillar of flame lifted out of a hollow. It stared at me with black, swirling eyes in Trevor's face and reached one hand toward me. His tattoo's simple lines glowed wild and orange like they had been painted with calligraphy brush. What the hell? Fire Trevor smiled at me. A cynical smile that cracked his face in flames of molten fire. Hell. Yeah, I guess so. Let's try to put it out. We won't go out, please. Hell will never go out. He swarmed over the bottom of the pit and climbed the side like it wasn't as smooth and glassy as fired porcelain. He reached toward me over the edge, and his hands promised pain. Come with me. What happened? The figure folded his arms along the side of the pit and propped his head on them, tilting his face and smiling, just like I'd found him this morning in the frost. There was no question. That was my husband. I did to myself what I've been trying to do for years, babe. Self-destruct. I tried to fix all the shit. I wanted to make up for hurting you. I thought maybe hell would be satisfied. I might have fucked up again. My husband watched me and licked his lips nervously. It was a very Trevor-like gesture, consumed with the crackling of heat and molten clay. You saved me once. You pulled me out of hell on Earth. I got four years of Gehenna. Four years of grace. Hell's calling me back. I didn't suffer enough to atone. Come with me. It won't be as bad if you're there. Just give it all up and go with you? I mean, you could just stay. I could stay here, without his laugh and his pterodactyl screams. 
without his 60-40 to my 70-30. Trevor rose up until he stood facing me at the edge of the pit. His hair was smoked and flamed, and I reached up to touch his face. My palms burned. I tried to ignore the melting of my skin. I love you. I love you too. His arms wrapped around me. My clothes caught fire, and I could smell my hair burning. Ah! When I started to scream, he kissed me to cut off the sound, keeping me all to himself. This, my girl, put it most likely to burn alive. Fortune, written by Lynn Browning, featuring performances by Kate Baldwin as B. Gordon, Graham Rowett as Trevor Gordon, and Jason Wilson as Charlie. Drinks at Maggie's, written by Michael Zenke, featuring performances by Mark Witten as Moth, Jesse Holt as Jeb, and Aaron Lilith as Ice Chef. Musical composition was by J.M. Scherf. Episode artwork, web development, and creative direction by Cassie Pertit. Social media and Patreon management was by Brooks Bigley. Videography is by Hale Scherf. Community management by Tori Miller. Audio engineering and sound design is by me, Jason Wilson. Anyone else get that hunka hunka burning love feeling? No? Perhaps a burning ring of fire type sensation. If you said yes you might want to go to a doctor and get that checked out immediately. Nothing like a fiery romance to spark a little terror in an otherwise boring work week. (laughs) We would like to take this time to thank our patrons and any of those who have taken the time to leave us a five-star rating and a review. Those reviews keep us at the top of the charts and makes it easier for more twisted souls to find the show. Patrons like Bridget Criswell, Ellen Houghton, Eric Pritchard, Eric Phones, Jacko Bot Snows, Lynn Browning, Matthew Smith Deal, Patrick Stewart, Ronan Kumori, Sean Gary, Crowley, and Dlomph. Boy, I hope I said that one right. And you can find the Grey Rooms on Spotify, iTunes, or your favorite podcatcher. But we're also now available on iHeartRadio's Spreaker app. Download the iHeart Spreaker app today or Open the browser and just search the Grey Rooms. And we here at the Grey Rooms love our fans and want to give back to you in the best way that we know how. And we have a lot of fun things planned for you. And we hope that you like them. You can find out more by joining us on social media. You can find us on Instagram, YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, and Facebook. And we took your advice and extended an olive branch to all of the tortured souls who have passed through the rooms. Our emotional support group is always looking to help you with all of your... Your needs. And don't forget about our merch store. It's full of epic designs and logos for you to sport, showing the world that you are a survivor of these very rooms. All of this can be found in the show notes or on our website at thegrayrooms.com. And have you checked out our Discord server? If you only listen to the podcast, you're only getting half the experience. Join for free to hang out with Grey Rooms cast and crew, watch movies, listen to music, or learn to write your very own horror story. Our community grows daily, and you can meet and interact with like-minded fans from all over the world. Todd may or may not have promised a special story time in the board of directors' bathroom for our top-tier patrons as well. So, episode 11. We're on the back end of the season. Man, oh man, season four has been a ride, has it not? (laughs) Well, it's also been a ton of work. And we need to keep rolling on to episode 12. So, time to get back at it. Thanks again ever so much for your support. We truly do appreciate it. 
But again, thank you. Back to work, and we'll see you next week. This has been a Gray Rooms production. Copyright 2021 and 2022.